right, Nathan? What a wonderful day for Iowa Central football. I'm Hank Ambrose with you for a top 10 matchup today, the matchup of the week from all across the nation in junior college football. I'm Hank Ambrose. Iowa Central Triton is going to be taking the field very, very soon here. Uh, and they're taking on the fifth-ranked Garden City Bronco Busters. If you know anything about Garden City, you know that they are tough sons of guns and have a historic junior college football program. Uh, just some of the names that they have graduated within the past few years, just incredible. Uh, if you do not know, Tyreek Hill actually came from the Bronco Busters. Star wide receiver now for the Dolphins. He's made his career known with the Kansas City Chiefs, but he's on the Miami Dolphins now. Uh, also, uh, members that have played in the 2010s in the Pro Football League, in the National Football League, Corey Dillon, who was a serviceable running, serviceable running back for a long time with the New England Patriots as well as the Cincinnati Bengals. He came here. Mike Hughes, who was one of the best cornerbacks out of the 2021 draft classes, played college ball at the University of Central Florida after he graduated here uh, and was part of that undefeated team that UCF had a few years back. Uh, he spent his times as a first-round pick with the Minnesota Vikings. His pro career hasn't turned out the best, but still a very talented guy. Lonnie Johnson as well, who is just a second-round pick a draft ago. He's now with the New York Jets with other Iowa State boys like Alan Lazard over there in New York. Uh, and another big name, Brent Venables, the head coach of the Sooners, also played college ball with the Garden City Bronco Busters. And it's that time. There goes the Triton herd. Waving the flags. True blue Tritons taking the field, running out. And I see out there Mario is going to be the last one to go through the Triton line. You make sure to remember his name, Mario. Going to be the X receiver for us today. What a week he had in week number one. We're going to go through and talk about that week number one matchup that the Iowa Central Tritons had, taking on Independence to open the season. Tritons open the season as a 10th ranked team on the season. They proved they should have been ranked a lot higher, and they should still be ranked a lot higher than what they are coming into this week, ranked at number nine. Tritons heading into week number one, ranked at number 10. They beat up on Independence Community College, 28 to 15. Silverstein threw for 251 yards, four touchdowns, including a pair to Mario Sanders, who I was just talking about the last guy to go through the line there. Michael Bartolota and Spencer then each caught touchdown passes. Sanders finished with six receptions for 95 yards. Bartolotta had four for 54, and Zinn had three. That went for 52. Three other players had catches. The Silverstein was 17 for 35 on the day, while also leading the team in rushing. Now, uh, not fantastic completion percentage numbers, something that Silverstein is definitely going to want to improve on for this week and for the rest of the year, but it was week one. Let's cut him some slack. He did throw for four, for crying out loud, and like I said, led the team in rushing uh, as well. Uh, coming off of the Bronco Busters first week, they beat the 12th ranked Butler School 27 to 22 in a barn burner. That had them climb the boards all the way up to number five, ranked at number five. So it's a number five versus number nine matchup for today. Uh, uh, to be honest, not a big fan of the rankings for both teams, but it is still early on in the season. They got a lot to prove, and neither of these teams have given up a loss yet. But one of them will have to today in Fort Dodge, Iowa, in Dodger Stadium, in the home of Iowa Central football. If you just joined us, this is your Triton pregame show. I'm Hank Ambrose with you for all home games, home broadcasts of the season. It's going to be an awesome one today. There go the Triton captains heading on to the field looks like they send out Dan Knutson with the five Steven Saywan also Justin Silverstein is out there and I believe I saw Mario as well yes Mario Sanders also went out there uh, to shake the hands those are your four Triton captains for the game today the home opener to the 23-24 season here goes the coin toss. Bronco Busters call heads. And it's tails. 
Iowa Central has won the toss. Let's see what they elect. Iowa Central has won the toss and elected to receive. They will receive. We're going to have Triton offense to start up here. Awesome. Well, that's great to hear. Uh, and what better time to go through some of those offensive play, uh, playmakers that make up for the Triton side. Justin Silverstein should be the starting quarterback in this one. Spencer Zinn, the starting tailback. Mario Sanders will be the X receiver. Harold Trainer the fourth, the Y. Riley Purcell will be the Z. H-back will be Michael Bartolotta. Uh, playing as a wing and a backup running back today, Gabriel Hilliard. Some other notable Tritons on defense, linebackers Trevion Taylor, Xavion Reese, and A.J. Russell are some names to look out for. And I love that the Tritons elected to receive to open up this game because this is like a Justin Silverstein homecoming game, if you will. Silverstein was involved in a very tenuous quarterback battle like five different players played quarterback last year for the tritons uh silverstein did not expect to get any playing time i don't believe uh and really what happened was zach marker the true starting quarterback went down uh actually injured himself in week number one he played throughout the rest of the game uh so week two when the iowa central tritons took on garden city at garden city last year justin silverstein got his first real start against the Bronco Busters and first start uh, in the Triton uniform. And if you know Justin Silverstein, you know that he was a D1 baseball player. Western Kentucky is where he comes from. Uh, decided that he wanted to pursue something else, came to Iowa Central Community College and walked on and he's been awesome, awesome, awesome. Here comes Harold Trainer on the return now. Uh, returns up from the two yard line, he'll make his way to about the 10. I think that'll put a seal on the Triton pregame show as we got Triton football in the first drive of the game coming up in just a moment. 14 minutes, 53 seconds on the clock. Triton's in the blue. Bronco Busters are in the yellow today. IO Central going to take the field. Let's see how they start. Used a committee for a running back system a week ago. Very dominant in the passing game. They only ran the ball a total of 10 times, just 10 rushing attempts in week number one. They start with a quarterback look to the left, fake it, going deep, deep, deep. Uh, laid it out for Harold Trainer, the fourth there, and uh, just going to be incomplete, a little too long. Went on a skinny streak right, route right over the middle of the field. It'll be a second and 10 ball on the Triton 10 yard line. Triton's heading into the south. Uh, the wind is blowing into the north, going against the wind here. Tritons come out in the pistol now, doubles on each side. Silverstein, back to pass, faked it short. Now he will fire over into the flats for the 87, who's gonna end up dropping it there. Ethan John, the intended receiver there, that time just gonna connect to the hands. Shaky start for the Tritons. It'll be a third and 10 on the Triton 10 yard line. Tritons open up on offense and you don't want to see a three and out here to start your day against the fifth ranked team in the nation. Tritons have trips stacked to the left. They go hard count on three. Mario Sanders gets the reception. He'll be brought down near the line of scrimmage, brought down by the number 23 on the Bronco Buster side. For the Bronco Busters there, on the tackle, that would be Bailey. Darius Bailey. Gain of four, we have a three and out situation, so the Tritons now gonna come out looking to punt. Colton Miller gonna be in to punt for the Iowa Central Tritons. He's got both his feet in his own end zone. Uh, Amon John is gonna be back deep to receive for the Broncos. He's standing at the 46 yard line on the Triton side. Uh, punt uh, gonna be shanked at the 25 yard line and the Bronco Busters start up in red zone territory already. What a start for them on offense. And I'm gonna be really interested to see who they bring out on offense for their starting quarterback. Last week they started Jalen Daniels, but it's up in the air to see who they will start today. Uh, Daniels does wear the number one, I do believe. I believe I saw him take the field. It looks like his away uniform will be the number two, actually. He'll be out there. You see him right to the hip of the eight. 
They try to get the Tritons on a hard count. 13 minutes, 56 seconds remain in the first quarter. We just got started with Triton football on Triton Haitian's YouTube channel. They begin with an inside zone, try to break it off, tackle, and tackled in the backfield. Who was there first? I believe it was Knutson, the kid out of Shaska, Minnesota. It was. So a loss of one to begin. Good tackle for loss there, second and 11. So check out this James Jones as well. James Jones going to be their starting tailback today. Phenomenal runner. Bronco Busters love players with speed, and he'll give you all the speed. Lightning quick. Back to pass. Daniels looks short with an out route, and he's going to be off as well. It is a windy day out today, uh, and maybe that has something to do with the miscommunication between the quarterbacks and the receivers. It'll be a third and 11 ball on the 25 yard line on the Triton side. It's Bronco Buster saw, uh, ball. We could be seeing another three and out. What a way to start. So Daniels in the gun. He'll have double stacked on each side. Back to pass. He's looking right, looking right, scrambling. Fires to a comeback route. And a nice deflection there from the four. That was Jamail Spy of the Tritons who broke that pass up. It goes incomplete, and we'll have a fourth in 11 for the Bronco Busters. Back-to-back -back three and outs. The only difference here is Bronco Busters will have a try for a field goal. So with the ball placed on the 25-yard line, you take the end zone 15 yards out. Kicker set up on the 32. It's going to be about a 47-yard field goal here in total distance. The kick is up. Oh, it's got some wind power to it. Trying to turn it inside. It's no good. A miss. A miss from Garden City. Okay. What a windy, shaky start for both teams on offense today and special teams. A shank from both the punter and the kicker. A three and out from both offenses. And now the Tritons get a second life. Justin Silverstein come out with Spencer's in, and I love the relationship these two guys have. Both Justin Silverstein, as I was talking about, was a walk-on. Just the scout team quarterback, really, uh, even when Byron Jarrett, former ICAC Offensive Player of the Year for the Iowa Central Tritons, just a scout team quarterback, uh, along with Spencer Zinn, who was a scout team tailback. Now these guys, in their third year, they got an extra year of eligibility because of the COVID year. In their third year with the Iowa Central Tritons, both of them starting. A great story that shows how great this developmental program is that the Iowa Central Tritons have with their coaching staff. They do a great job at molding these guys not to be not just to be better athletes, better football players, but also better humans. I see a Danny Werfel Award runner-up uh, from a former Triton. We'll get into that later on. As there's a wheel route, uh, blew the coverage. Justin Silverstein is off with his pass again. That time it was Spencer Zinn, who was the intended receiver, and he was wide open. Not a good start for these quarterbacks, and I don't have the exact wind mile per hour radar on me but I, I, I gotta say it's it's blowing hard and with the unsuccessful throws we've seen so far you got to think that that has to be a factor and there's another one uh, that one actually a better throw close it goes through the hands of trainer and falls incomplete so back-to-back -back three and outs for the Tritons in their offensive drives And Hilliard will be in uh, will be in punt formation for the Tritons, and Damas will be back deep to return for Garden City. Punting from the 25-yard line, Tritons go three and out again. 12 minutes and 23 seconds remain. Where the punt gets up, nice sailor going back towards the 35 on the Garden City side. Here's a good return, pass the 50 near the 45, and ended up right in front of the band. It'll be a first and 10 set up once again in Triton territory. Oh, hang on now. We have a flag near the 50 yard line. Usually when you see a penalty marker on a punt return, you can expect a block in the back or a, 
a holding call, especially if you get a return of 10 yards plus. I'm waiting for the official call here. Blindside block. That's a 15-yard penalty. Much worse than what I uh, pre uh, thought, predicted. Either a holding call or... Yeah, that's no good. That's going to lose them 15 yards. That'll set them up first and 10 now on their own 35-yard line where they could have started near the Tritons' 45. In the pistol they go, showing jet sweep. Sending a man over from the strong side of the field. Ball's out. Get on it. I think the Tritons recovered. I think Knutson got on it. I think it's Knutson. Tritons are freaking out on the sidelines. Coach Bailey loves it. And the Tritons hold it up. And it is Knutson. Tritons take over. Dan Knutson. Had the first tackle for the Tritons, and now the first turnover put them on the record books. First and 10 on the 40-yard line, Tritons take over. Tritons in the all blue from head to toe, Garden City in the mustard yellow. And a sloppy food fight it's been on offense for both these quarterbacks, throwing tomatoes all over the place. Silverstein. Might have to resort to the ground. They go short pass, looking out to the flats. I believe it's part a lot on that last reception. I didn't get the exact jersey number. It is Bart Alata. He'll get to the line of scrimmage. And a gain of maybe another yard or so. Will they give him a yard? Uh, yeah. Really just gave him inches. No gain on the play. They'll resume with a second 10 on the 40 in the pistol doubles on each side swing pass option oh look at that blown coverage there uh miscommunication between the tritons is what i'm gonna sum that up to you saw there spencer's in uh went on a little swing route and they actually showed a one-man screen block with mario sanders as the x receiver far out spread to the weak side uh but with all that being said, you saw Bartolotta then start to run a route, uh, somewhat similar to an in route. Didn't get to see the full de developmental of the route because it was just about a two or three second yard play. Uh, open again, just couldn't get it to him. Go with a hard count, flag will throw. Here's a free play, shooting it deep. Long, 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 it'll go out of bounds, but a free play is the edge rusher of Garden City jumped into a false start. Let's see who it is. It's the, I believe that's the 44. Watching him come off the field right now. That'll be the 64, actually. And that is, that is Ontarius Harrison who jumped that time. It's going to be a five yard penalty, replay of downs, third and five on the 35. So now the Tritons have another shot to get a third down conversion here. They go empty backfield. Trips, no, make that doubles on the strong side. Trips to the weak side. And a false start again. The hard count is getting them. Well, hey, if you can't move the rock, then move the line of scrimmage with those hard counts. Football doesn't have to be a physical game if it doesn't need to be. Tritons are beating these guys down in the mind games. Awesome. And uh, off of the hard count, you can call that the first first down of today. And so far the best play for this Triton offense. I'd keep going with it. In the pistol, look at those triple wing receivers outright. A wide receiver screen, Bartolotta makes a juke move. Really good pursuit by the D-backs of Garden City. Gonna push them out of bounds. 
see what they give them on the game. They'll give them four yards officially. It'll be second and six. Ball on the 26-yard line. Triton's a yard away from being in the red zone. Ten minutes, 55 seconds remain in the first quarter. We just got started for the 2023-2024 home opener of Triton football. Halfback slash, moving outside, almost dropped it. He's running with the football, and he's going to actually trip and fall down. Might have rolled his ankle there. Penalty markers have flown. That's another thing that I'd like to bring up. In week number one, Darden City committed 16 total pen penalties, 129 yards of total penalties given up. Uh, that's actually not a lot for committing 16 penalties. That tells you that there were a lot of false starts and a lot of holds, a lot of five yard and a lot of 10 yard penalties against them. This penalty is gonna be against the Iowa Central Tritons, matter of fact, uh, bringing them back and having them lose the yards they just gained from the first down and actually gonna lose another five on top of that. So you can make this a second and 15 on the 36 yard line. 16 penalties in week one. Now, I understand week one is always week one in any sport. You're going to have some rough spots, some bruises and stuff, but 16 penalties, that's unacceptable. Have to do better today if you're Garden City. With pressure on his back, he fires, and it's going to go incomplete. We'll have a third and long, third and 16 on the 36-yard line. Clock is stopped, 10 minutes and 24 seconds remaining in the first quarter. There go the dancers and cheerleaders. What a great job they do as, as well as the band putting on another great performance for the Triton Rally. And a great attendance today of Iowa Central supporters as well as you can see back deep in the stands there. Here's a third and long, third and 16, trips left. Two spread out. To the right side, looking to run. Silverstein has wheels. He's got the running room. He's moving forward. A dive might have him good for a first down. And it will be good enough for a first down. Didn't know if his knee would have brought him back a ways. No. That knee did get him. Hold your horses here. Fourth and two, and the Tritons look like they're going to go for it, at least showing a hard count, I assume. Look at this goal line package that Garden City's coming out in, and they do try to hit them with the hard count. Didn't jump that time. Triton's going to get another chance to set, and they'll hand off inside zone, spin, pushing forward, met at the line of scrimmage. And it's another turnover on downs. That make five turnovers today. Wow. And we'll have a media timeout. We should take it with them. We'll take a 30-second break. Be right back after this on Trite Nation. Hank Ambrose with you for the coverage. We just saw a turnover on downs. There is a muffed snap. Good play by Jalen Daniels to keep the play alive and try to get back to the line of scrimmage. Did he? They are going to give him some yards. A gain of five. Second and five. Second and five. Garden City shows the gun with doubles. Going back to pass, short little curl route. 
near to the line to gain and a broken tackle gonna move him past for a Garden City first down. It's zero to zero, 8.48 remain for the time in quarter number one. Trite, Triton showing two deep safeties today. A 3-4 package. A lot of very talented linebackers on this Triton defense. They're going to let them work today. Running out right. A flag is thrown near where the ball carrier was. Let's see what they come up with again. Again, another game for the Bronco Busters where it's been penalty after penalty. What is it against them? Personal foul, chop block. Personal foul, chop block. Oh, wow. It was between 71 and 73. A chop block against both of them, so that's a personal foul. Oh, my gosh, that is huge. So 71 and 73 get called for a personal foul. Remember, you can only commit two, and then you'll have to go to the locker room and sit the rest of the game. Those are two of their offensive linemen. That is their starting center and their starting left tackle. So the blind side of the quarterback, and I'd say the most important offensive lineman, the center, are in deep trouble here. Jalen Daniels gonna be sacked and wrapped up. Malachi Bird gets him for the big sack, bringing him back another chump change of yards. Maybe a loss of just one. Should be a second and 26, second 25, somewhere around there. And they will give him the forward progress, so just keep it at second and 25. Second and 25, ball on the 27 yard line. It's still zeros on the scoreboard. Seven minutes. 25 seconds remain in quarter number one. Uh, Triton's showing no deep safety. He's going man to man, showing blitz. Oh, here's the backup now. They just pulsed at the beginning there, moved back forward. Oh, missed tackle opportunity there. But look at that, like a pack of dogs. Hounds them again, and that's gonna be another gain of nothing. Okay, Bird on the stop. The Triton pressure has been awesome today. If it wasn't for the wind going against the quarterbacks today, it's also this yeah, Triton defensive line. Card City. Brings up third and long. And Andre Porter might have been there first on the initial one-on-one, -on -one, but it was a gang tackle that eventually got the job done. It's third and 25, inside zone. No, play action pass, looking long, firing over the middle of the field, open man, and gonna be an incomplete pass again, just going over the head, the head of the intended receiver that time. Uh, and that's Travis Mal Malloway. No, excuse me, that's my Triton roster. That's the number two on the Garden City side. That would be... Mario Sanders back deep for the Triton. Back to it, Tritons back deep to return with Mario Sanders and penalty markers thrown again. Cody Kirk in confirmation for Garden City. Full start. Now we got a full start on the offense. Like I said, 16 penalties in week number one and they are just digging their own grave. This is ridiculous. A loss of another five yards. Fourth and 30. And another flag. Oh! And uh, that's gonna be another penalty against Garden City. Called for a fair catch and Thank wrapped them up. The play. There is multiple flags on what in the world? <laughs> Garden City is playing uh, undisciplined. playing undisciplined today. Well, how do you sort this out? If you have a false start and then you have a 
running into the return man p penalty. There are fouls on both teams to offset. Illegal numbering. Offense number 13. True number 13 is in formation. Oh. Okay, offset. Okay, so the official call is against both teams. That's going to offset and replay fourth and 30. Uh, there were two number 13s on the play for the Iowa Central Tritons. And you can't have the same numbers, of course, more than a, one of the same number. That's a good pickup from the ref. I, that flew over my head. Um, and then they're actually going to call Garden City for block in the back rather than late hit which is going to save them because that would be a personal foul against the runner tracking down the return man, Mario Sanders, who is also our ex-receiver. It's good to see that Mario is okay and he's back out there to return for the Tritons. Fourth and 30, still on the 22-yard line, six and a half minutes remain in the first quarter. The punt is up and it's headed toward the sideline and fair catch for Sanders at the 44 yard line. Tritons take over first and 10. Six minutes, 23 seconds remain. And while I got you, I'd like to shout out our sponsors of the broadcast that have, that will be with us for this season. A uh, big thank you to Avela Bank, CNOS, Marks Auto Mart, as well as Rash Construction. Thank you for sponsoring the broadcast and for all you do for the local community. First and 10, six minutes, 23 seconds remain. Tritons take the field in the pistol. Silverstein out there. With the backup tailback, that is Washington, moves forward from the original spot. So no gain, the official call, no gain. A second and 10 again. Second and 10, ball on the 44-yard line. See how these Tritons will move it this time. Doubles. In the pistol, hard count. Garden City yelling at their guys to watch the ball. Back to pass, going short over to Bartolotta. Threw an out route over there, and it's going to be away. And Bartolotta, I just noticed he's... Playing without any gloves on. How many wide receivers do you see play without gloves? Third and ten, going to be on the 44-yard line. Washington in at tailback. In the pistol. Remain with doubles on each side. With a hard count, going on two, back to pass, rolling right, looking, keeping. Here we go, Silverstein is on his move, running with the football. A quarterback scramble is going to be good enough for another Triton first down. A gain of 15. First and 10, Triton's on the 41-yard line on the Garden City side. And maybe it's just going to have to be the improv place just like that that Allow the chains to move for Iowa Central. Both teams struggling on offense. In the pistol. Trip stacked right. Oh, man. That is a very high, a very north tackle there. Wrap it up. Uh, the number one. Daniel Martin was there on the tackle of Garden City. Second and 14, following the loss of four. Ball on the 45-yard line. Triton set a man in motion. It's Jalen Washington. Uh, short curl route over to Bartolotta. Makes his first reception of the day. Going to be a gain of about six. Might give him a little more. Uh, no, they'll keep it right at six. Off the curl route. That'll make it third and eight on the 38-yard line. Still in the first quarter. Four minutes, 15 seconds remain. It's been a dry spell on offense. Oh, 
Who's first to weather the storm? In the double, sending Jalen in motion again, this time to the strong side. They run slants. Quarterback keeper scrambling, going, and good enough for another Triton first down. First out of bounds at the 28, and a move to change for a Triton. There's Silverstein, so from what I remember, all three first downs the Tritons have picked up have come off of quarterback scrambles from Justin Silverstein. And Tritons might call a timeout here. I see Silverstein cramping up. Well, they brought Bartolotta off. They call for official timeout for an injured offensive player. And I'm not for sure where this, where this, I, I missed this injury. Maybe my view. Well, here we go. We're resuming back to the action. In the pistol. It's been all pistol today from Triton. Send a man in motion. It's Washington. Back to pass. Here's a screen. Running with the ball up the middle of the field. Spin move. Swing pass complete. Swing pass complete. Going to be good for another gain of 10 for Iowa Central. On the reception there. Could it have been Taylor? Second and one. And one. No, Jaquez Hall. Jaquez Hall on that last reception. Not going to be enough for a first down. Markham inches away. Tritons. Show motion. Stacking up the strong side. It's the right side of field, and they'll call the play dead. Yeah, a legal procedure going to be against the offense. Oh, no. False start even. False start against Mario Williams, who is spread out wide as the X. And that's another good pickup from the stripes. I, uh, that's another penalty that I did not even pick up. I was focused at the line of scrimmage right at the ball. Back to the gun. Doubles to the strong side. Play action pass and a quick fire. Going to drop it. That time it was Ethan John, the intended Passing receiver. Intended for Ethan John. Brings up third and six. Third and six now on the 24 yard line. Two minutes and 45 seconds remain in this first quarter. Been a lot of pitter patter. Need to get the engine going. Putting it around. Third and six. Tritons go empty backfield, sending Mario in motion. Trips right. Back to pass. Going for Mario. Fade route to the end zone. He caught it. There's the touchdown score. A 24 yard fade route is going to put the Tritons on the board first. Six to zero. Perfect placement there from Justin Silverstein. And those third downs are killers because you never know, especially when you're that close to the end zone, will the offensive team go to the uh, go for the end zone or are they just looking to pick up the first down? That time they caught Garden City on their heels and the Tritons pick it up. And now to kick, Congolo Buenincamba. Second year starting kicker for Iowa Central. Gets the kick up and it is good. 7-0. We're going to take a break and be right back to resume the broadcast and all the action right here on Triton Nation.
off. Doss is back deep to return, gets the ball, and uh-oh, open lane. Got some more Tritons to beat, running towards the 40-yard line. A solid return from the five. The number five there that time on the return is Kamarin Laborn. Well, Tritons scored first a 24-yard fade route. Mario Williams with a receiving touchdown. He's got three of those on the season now. 7-0. Tritons have the lead. Two and a half minutes remain in the first quarter. They come out in the pistol. Coach Conley on the sideline, the defensive coordinator, calling for pass, and they end up not going that route. Look like switching off an audible. They move off tackle. James Jones was on the carry. Tripped up at the 45. It'll be a second and five for the Bronco Busters. The Brock Busters, rather. Second and five. Two minutes remain. In quarter number one. In the gun. Trips left. Lone receiver out right. They're going to fire to him over the middle of the field. Going to be good enough for a Buster first down. On the reception that time, the number 80. That's Aju Aju. One minute and 40 seconds remain. Got twins on each side. In the gun. And here's a quarterback keeper wrapped up. And a big tackle for loss. That's Branson Peters who made the tackle for for loss. Going to be a loss of about four. Branson is out of Mason City, Iowa. And Branson, I assume, probably never would have thought he'd call Fort Dodge his home, knowing Mason City and the Fort Dodge Dodgers being very big high school rivals. He makes his appearance as a Triton in the starting lineup today. Here we go, far over the middle of the field, through the hands and almost a grab from Eli West. 7-0. Remains the same. It'll be a third and 14 on the 44-yard line. It's been a really hard day for the passing game. And two very pass-heavy offenses. And, I, you know, I, I know I give a lot of grief to the quarterbacks today, but the wide receivers, or receivers in general, having a really hard time at watching the ball come in. Even when it's to the receiver, it comes in like a wiffle ball, shaking all over the place. In the gun, back to pass, looking left, stepping up. He will fire deep, post route. High and mighty grab by the number one. Oh, my goodness. What a grab that was. That was Demas who made the grab. 30 seconds remain in the first quarter, and the chains get moving quick. First and 10 on the 15-yard line. Garden City moves. Trips left, lone receiver right, looking right. Jalen Daniels steps up, looking, looking. Fires, corner of the end zone. He's got his feet dragging, and six for Garden City. Wow, what a throw from Jalen Daniels. What a reception there from the number 80 that time. It's Aju Aju who picks up the 15 yard receiving touchdown. Makes it 7-6, 10 seconds remain in the first quarter. And Garden City will come out to go for the PAT. I did notice that Daniels went down to the turf hard. He is okay. Teammates picked him right back up, give him a big old bear hug. Oh no, look at this, they fake it. Oh, in a muff, muff snap off the helmet of the tailback in from that last two point try. It's gonna be a one point lead for Iowa Central, seven to six. So what we'll do is we'll take a 30 second break and be right back to resume the play by play right after this on Triton Nation.
Garden City go for six. 15 yard comeback Brandon route for Azu Azu. How the Tritons will respond is yet to play out. They just took the field for the kickoff return. It's seven to six. Here we go. And the kickoff from the lefty is going back deep to the 10 yard line. Uh oh, through the hands. Oh, and falls at the one. Trainer ends up slipping. That's not a good start. Not a good day for him returning. That opening return just got to the 10 yard line. If you recall at the very beginning of the game and there bounces off his chest, picks the ball back up and slips at the one yard line. Uh, they'll be gracious and give him an extra yard, making it a first and 10 at the two yard line. Triton sent up in their own end zone. These teams have been their own worst enemy today. Seven, six, seven seconds remaining in this first quarter. Triton's good to run one play. Before we begin the second quarter. Looks like some confusion on the play for Iowa Central and are you gonna take the time out or? I'm waiting for the call. Delay a game against the offense. A delay a game against the offense and they won't call a timeout. So that's gonna lose them just a yard. Because that's all they had to lose. Triton stay out there for one final play of the first quarter. Back to pass, deep in the pocket. Evades the pressure, moves, fires, one-handed grab, caught! Look at that grab from Spencer Zinn. As he moves forward, gonna be a gain of 20 on the play. What a way to close quarter number one, seven to six. That was phenomenal. And you know, there was a lot of yellow around him and I think that helped him out on the catch because the way he caught it, to me, it looked like he caught it off the back of one of the Brock Busters, which allowed him to re-catch his grasp and hold on and stay moving on his feet for some yards after the catch. 7-6 after one, 15 minutes remain in the first half. We're going to keep it right here. I'd like to thank our sponsors again. Thank you to the folks at Avela Bank, CNOS, Marks Auto Mark and Rosh Construction. Rash Construction, thank you very much for sponsoring the broadcast, not just today, but all season long for the Iowa Central Tritons. It's seven to six, leading by one. Tritons set up near the 20 yard line, gonna be at the 21. Now the Tritons going to be moving into the north against the wind. And yeah, the wind, they, it's changed directions. If you recall, Tritons were going against the wind in the very beginning. Now that we've switched sides, Tritons again are going against the wind. First and 10, ball on the 21 yard line. A new series for the Tritons. Here's a new package, a heavy pistol the blocking back to the right hip of Silverstein. He'll scramble out right, firing, uh, and that ball is just thrown away. Trainer was the closest receiver there, but to me, I believe he just threw it away. Too much pressure. Had a zone read he had to look out for as well, and good defensive coverage from the Bronx Busters. 14 minutes, 54 seconds remain. In the gun, trips left. Exterior handoff, you see there, he took it off his backhand and now Spencer Zinn will move it forward. And that's on the far side of me, I can't 
tell exactly where, how close that is. It'll be a gain of nine, second and one. Ball's gonna be on the 30 yard line. Got one yard to go to pick up the chains. See if that changes the Triton structure because so far it's been medium passes and small passes for the majority of the day. They go with a hard count and they'll call the play dead from a penalty. Uh, and that one is tough to tell because I saw jumps on both sides. But they're moving. It looks like they're going to give the Tritons a first down. Five-yard penalty and a first down for the Iowa Central Tritons. They call it a neutral zone fraction. 14 minutes, 47 seconds remain in the first half, and the Tritons lead by one. It's 7-6. to six. Go back in the pistol. End around, looking, going short. Bartolotta tries to evade his one man, and looks like it's going to be a mix of either a horse collar tackle or even a fast face mask against Garden City. And then it'll all just depend on what showed first. Either way, it'll be a first down for the Iowa Central Tritons and a gain of 15, unless they put them on the spot of the foul. Personal foul, face mask, face number zero. And that is a face mask against the zero. The number zero. So not only have we've seen a very many fouls today, penalty flags thrown, but four of them have been personal fouls, all four of them against starters, and you can only have two in a game before you have to sit the rest of the day. First and 10, ball's now on the 49-yard line. Tritons show jet sweep. Quarterback keeper, Silverstein runs. Wow, smacked. Gets sandwiched between two medicine providers. 
You can visit our clinic knowing you will receive the best orthopedic care in the area. Located at Unity Point, we offer quality care to address any bone or joint problems. We are committed to providing the best possible care to the communities we serve. CNOS, proud sponsors of the Iowa Central Tritons. Go, Go Tritons! Tritons. Ambrose, thanks for joining us today and making us part of your weekend, your Labor Day weekend. It's the 2023-2024 Triton home opener, and oh my gosh, big man out there, big man out there. What's going on here? Going for it, fourth and two. Moves forward. Now, on the extra effort, he'd be good for a first down, but it once again depends on where they spot the knee. And that is a Triton first down. Waited for it. And the chain gang did too. They were unsure. But they'll give it to Iowa Central first and 10. There you go. And did you notice Andre Porter take the field, the starting nose tackle, two-year starter for Iowa Central? And big fellow was in on the last play. Showed a mountaintop formation. It'll be a first and 10, ball on the 39-yard line. They have to reset the game clock. Well, if you heard it right there, folks, Garden City is going to be challenging that last play there. So the Stripes will get together, and they'll check out the field. They're headed to that blue 10 over there where... They have a replay monitor to look it over. Uh, this is a big spot here. It's seven to six. Tritons just have a one point lead. It's either gonna be a turnover on downs or the Bronc Busters are gonna have to stay out there. Bring in the offensive guys. It's a big spot here. Uh, while I got you, let's give some more love to those sponsors. Thank you to Avela Bank, CNOS, Mark Saddlemart, and Rash Construction, thank you for sponsoring the broadcast. Not just today, but all season long for the Iowa Central Tritons. Well, it's been a day of frustration on both sides. That's what I expect to hear back from Coach Montalto when I talk with him after the game. I, I, I don't expect to be uh, very pleased on either side. A lot of penalties for Garden City. Have a, had a hard time throwing the ball around. Uh, it's hot as well. Seven six. As we continue to wait, Hawkeye, checking over the replay monitor for the stripes. And from it looks like they've made a decision. Dallas, halftime, Colorado seventeen. Comes the head official. And looks like the offense is staying out on the field. Stands is called. First down, Iowa Central. And Garden City is going to lose their first timeout of the game. Uh, so each team going to have just two timeouts remaining in this first half. First and 10 on the 39 yard line. Justin Silverstein calling the cadence. He's back to pass, looking left, looking short, got a fire. There he goes. Ah, and looked around for it, but Schenkelberg couldn't come up to where the ball was. It'll be a second and 10 now, staying on the 39 yard line. 12 minutes and 41 seconds remain. Make a second and 10 for the train. The 
Tritons head back out in the pistol. Blocking back in the set. Bunched receivers on each side. Back to pass over the middle of the field. And caught. Going to be a gain of at least nine. Might be good for a first down. Mario, Sa no, not Mario Sanders there. That was Jalen Washington who made the grab. It'll be a third and one now. Ball on the 30-yard line. Spencer's in, takes a field. It's the big number zero right there. Blocking back in the set. See John there. Doubles still in the pistol. Back to pass. Firing for the end zone. Fader out. Oh, got him to the hands. Penalty thrown. And it is where the intended pass went. You can expect a pass interference of some kind or possibly a defensive holding over there. Odds are likely that the Tritons are going to set up with another first and ten. It is a pass interference on the defense. Official call. Automatic first down and the Tritons move forward. So they're not going to give them the spot there. Rather, they'll give them 15 yards. First and 10 on the 15 yard line. Tritons in the pistol. Trips right. Man in motion, Mario Sanders. Sanders gets a handoff, jet sweep, looking for blockers. Oh, wow. A big bop. Puts him down at the 10-yard line. It's going to be a gain of five, second and five on the 10. Triton's looking for their second score of the ball game, but you got to punch it in. Brings up second and six. Pistol, doubles right, lone receiver left. John is also out there at tight end on the weak side. They're going to bunch tight end and wide receiver. Moving forward, going back, going back, looking left. And firing for the end zone. Ball batted up and picked off. Where his feet in bounds. It was intercepted by the number 10. Intercepted by the number 10 on the Brock Buster side. That's B.J. Blake. And he didn't try to return it. So Brockbusters now get themselves another turnover. First and 10 for Jalen Daniels and company at the 20 yard line. 7-6. And look, they will continue to roll with Jalen Daniels. They're in the gun, doubles, strong side. Makes some sort of audible to the slot receiver. And they go with an inside zone. Hit hard, <coughs> excuse me. They're on the tackle of the 64. That's Kelton Reed of Earl Earlham, Iowa, who made that last tackle. A gain of three, it'll be second and seven on the 23 yard line. Daniels in the gun, bunched twins on each side. Oh, wow. Nuts and almost went in the neutral zone. Good job at not jumping too far. Here's a defensive audible from D.C. Coach Conley. Call for Bama. They send four. Comeback route. Short of the line to gain, but extra effort. Get to move them forward. Speak with Coach Mintalto for the Triton Tailgate Halftime Show. Brought to you by Mark Sotomart right here in Fort Dodge. Here's a short curl, about three yards. Yards after catch, going to move them forward. Going to be good for another Garden City first down. Eight minutes and 15 seconds remain. Garden City is starting to find their stride. Hitting on rhythm. First and 10 on the 47. First and 10 for Triton's showing a 3-4 look. 
two deep safeties. Wide receiver screen, making a man miss. There he goes. He's got speed. They love the speed. Going to be a gain of at least 15. Maybe a hunch more. Pass complete. Giovanni Revolvo with the reception. Giovanni Revolvo with the reception. And the first down for the Bronx Busters. Seven and a half to play in the first half. It's 7 6. Ball on the 27 yard line. In the gun, we've seen turnovers in the red zone before. They go wide receiver screen through the hands. And it looks like the ball did move forward. So no fumble on the play. They end up calling the play dead. For Zeralta, that time the intended receiver. And it's good for the Bronx Buster side that they called it dead because if they didn't, we would have seen Stephen Sawain go to the house for six as long as he kept those legs running. He would have been good for a touchdown. Halfback misdirection this go around from the gun. James Jones. James Jones on the carry. Gain a five. It'll be a third and five now. Seven minutes remain. 22-yard line brings up third and five. Third and five, under seven to go. Triton's in the all blue and Garden City in the yellow. And they'll call the play dead at the line of scrimmage. Got a timeout probably. Haven't heard the call yet. Yep, Iowa Central will burn up their second timeout of the half. They'll have one remaining. Bronx Busters will have two remaining. It's 7-6. Seven six, six minutes and 40 seconds remain in the second quarter. We'll resume after the 30-second break right after this on Trite Nation. And we're back to the action. Trite Nation's YouTube channel. I'm Hank Ambrose with you for the play-by-play -play coverage. It's not been a spectacular day of offensive woes. It's been lackluster. These teams are looking really raw out on the field. All-out blitz. Sending eight. Fire to the end zone. Flags thrown. Pass is incomplete. We have Marker on the play. Wow. Also an injury down on the field. We're going to stay right here to make sure we can cover all. It looks like the injured man will get up. It's the 66 from the offensive line of the Bronx Busters. That's Antarius Harrington. Looks like he's going to be okay walking off to his own power. So the Iowa Central Tritons send eight rushers, a nano blitz, where the rest of the three other guys that don't blitz, they're just... All in cloud coverage, back deep. And they will call a defensive pass interference. That's going to be against Aaron Warren of Iowa Central. And Brock, Bronk Busters will have a first and goal now on the eight-yard line. 6.35 to go in the second quarter. And Coach Connolly's calling for some subs and audibles on the field. Switching over to the weak side of play. They're thinking it's going over there. Here's a quarterback scramble. He fires to the end zone. And touchdown. Alexander Lyons with the reception. Alexander Lyons with the re reception. It makes it 12-7, and Garden City, I'm sure, will be going for it here. So just a five-yard out route. Got it done. Found, a, found his feet in the end zone. It's 12-7. 
What will Garden City come out in this go-around? Their last two-point attempt clanked off the helmet of the signal caller. They do have Jaden Daniels in this go-around. They hand off, half-back gut up the middle of the field, and waiting for the call. Be short. Two point conversion. He no will be short. Two-point conversion, no good. 6.29 remaining in the half. It's 12 to 7. We'll take a break and resume after this. In 30 seconds, Triton kickoff return is next. Triton Nation's YouTube channel. Number nine. Daniel's going to be sacked on the play. That's Marlon Dawson, Dawson with the big play of Detroit, back. Michigan, tracking down the quarterback. And now we'll see a fourth and ten. And Garden City's calling out for punt. Two minutes and ten seconds remain in the first half. Iowa Central will have one more drive. Cricket punt formation. Mario Sanders back deep to return for Iowa Central. You can see him standing near the 20. Here's a drop punt. Going to go short. Short and shanked. First and 10 for Iowa Central. Going to be near the 30-yard line. Official spot is the 35. First and 10, one minute, 45 seconds remain in the first half. You know, even if it's not a touchdown, Iowa Central has to grab some of that momentum and bring it over to their side to close out this first half because they are just down and out. In the pistol, trips right. Set a man in motion, back to pass. Here's a shot from a seam route, and Bartolotta will have a gain of Little just a couple. Comes a second and six. 
Minute and a half remains. Washington. One twenty on the clock. Back to pass. Play action. Fire over left. Wrapped up. Swing pass. Brought down. By Tyler Schenkelberg. Tyler Schenkelberg. Who's getting more and more involved as Triton Dakota playmakers Dora are continuing to struggle. He's made a few good plays today. One minute to go in the first half. It's a third and eight from the 36. Showing the pistol. And if you can't get it here, there's no sense in stopping the clock. So you might as well maybe use a draw. And they go empty backfield, so no halfback draw. Look right, look right. Fires for Zinn, and he drops it. There's going to be 34 seconds remaining, and it'll be up to Garden City if they'd like to try for a 30-second drive. And I'm sure a lot of it will have to be determined by how good of a spot they get from their return man. DeMond Demas back deep. DeMond Demas is back deep to return for Garden City and the Brockbusters. Miller to punt for the Tritons. Fourth and eight on the 36. 34 seconds remain in the second quarter. Going back, and a punt is up. Going back towards the 15, the 10, the five, back, back. Did he touch it? Did he touch it? Oh my gosh, again, it looked like he touched it. No reaction from them, but again, looked like the return man touched it, but no. They'll call it a touchback. To the 20 yard line for Garden City. I don't, you never know with these cats if they might try to go over the head of Iowa Central or if they decide just to knee it and go into halftime. We will see. They are taking their time getting to the line of scrimmage. Walking. They get there now. Here we go. They come out on with twins on each side in the gun. And Garden City not happy. They didn't get the snap off. Iowa Central is going to use their final timeout. I like the timeout call there uh, so they can game plan and talk over the formation they just saw. Obviously, Garden City thought they had something smart on offense for a play design. Is the uh, receivers not happy with the, the way uh, they didn't get the snap off? Will that change what they do for this play? I don't know. You stick around for the halftime show because we're going to actually be playing a video that I got to be a part of, an interview. Uh, me and Coach Mentalto for the Triton Tailgate Show brought to you by Mark Sotomart right here in Fort Dodge. Talked about the game, the preseason, week one a little bit, and what to expect for today. First and 10, and they will just knee it. That'll close the first half, 12 to seven. And what we'll do is we'll just take a break and then we'll get to that report and we'll continue the broadcast the rest of today. How will the Tritons respond heading to the locker room all comes down to the big speech for Iowa Central. We'll be right back on Triton Nation. Sit down and we talk with all the Triton Nation coaches, talk about the upcoming season, talk about players, and even have a little fun. Today, uh, Hank Ambrose is going to sit down with Jesse Montalto and talk a little bit about the upcoming season and last week's game. But first, Jeremy Crimmins is here with me from Mark Sotomar. We're going to talk about this really cool truck behind me. I want this truck. You'd look good in it. I would. Yeah. So tell me about this truck. Uh, it's a 2020 Chevy High Country, uh, one ton. Uh, I guess some aftermarket tires and wheels. Uh, 
fully loaded power tailgate, hot cold seats, navigation, uh, sunroof, pretty much everything you can want in a truck. I, I like that power lift gate. I like that. You like that? That, that, was, that was nice. I was nice. I got to play with that a little bit. Um, so a truck like this, uh, what do you, if folks see a truck like this on the lot or want to see more of what you guys have, what do they do? How do they get hold of you guys? Uh, you give us a call, 515-573-5931, or look us up on the web, www.marksautomart.net. Very nice. Thank you, Jeremy. You now, let's head to the tailgate and talk to Hank and Jesse. Welcome to the Marks Auto Mart tailgate show. I'm Hank Ambrose with Coach Jesse Montalto, the head football coach of the Iowa Central Tritons. Coach, it's good to see you today. Good to see you. Appreciate you having me. Hey, thanks for joining us for the program today. Well, it's already that time at the near end of August, soon to be September. It's football season. You have game number one under your belt already. And uh, But I want to start a little bit before there in preseason talk, if you don't mind. Uh, Iowa Central graduated six total All-Americans from last year. Don't have a single one returning. Uh, first off, could we talk about those folks? Yeah, you know, I'm um, obviously losing a lot of talent with Desna and um, Camacho and, and Steele and, and just a handful of those guys that were really good for us. Um, you know, we got a lot to replace. We've got zero returning starters coming back on both sides of the ball. Um, limited guys that saw significant action really on offense. Um, we've got Justin Silverstein is really the only one that played in critical minutes last year. And then uh, Spencer Zinn got a little bit of tick here and there. Um, and Jonathan Young played a little bit. But for the most part, we're really young on the offensive side. And then defensively, the same thing, uh, you know, where you lose so many guys uh, in a piece that's really, you know, been been the stable of our program over the last couple of years, and especially having those guys with an additional year with COVID. Um, and you turn those guys out and they go move on to, to the next level. Um, so we've got a lot to replace on defense. But, um, you know, Andre Porter's back on the defensive line. Um, you know, and then really linebacking course, pretty fresh. Xavion Reese played a little bit last year. He's back um, along with Colvin Miller, who was our punter last year. Uh, he's playing a significant role this year at outside linebacker. Um, and then Steven Sewan in the back end has is, is really kind of stepped up to be our leader who played a little bit last year along with uh, Darrell Matcham. Despite the folks that have gone on to other colleges to continue their athletic and academic career, you guys have also brought in a lot of talent specifically from the state of Iowa, which I personally love being a huge fan of high school football myself. Some of the huge names, Jalen Lueth, one of them. Yeah. Uh, also in that mix, Dallas Saucer, both of those Ames guys, as well as local talent, Javion Jondo, among many other Iowa boys. Talk about recu uh, recruiting from the home state. Yeah, we felt like this year was probably our best recruiting class since we've been here, you know, and I think we really tried to hammer home um, within that local base, and, and uh, we were able to get some really good players, and uh, – you know, at the receiver position, Achille Maddox, um, who's from Iowa City High, was another big time get for us. Um, you know, obviously Jalen has, has got a ton of ability, played a little bit in the first game. Um, Dallas is going to be special at quarterback. Uh, Tyler Smith from Sergeant Bluff Luton is another quarterback that's going to be really good. Um, grabbed a couple good running backs. Uh, and then offensive line, I thought we had probably our best uh, recruiting class since 2019 at offensive line. So we've got some really good young kids. I think. You know, total-wise on our roster right now, um, 75 of our kids are, are from the state of Iowa. Wow. Um, so we've got a good good amount of guys from there. Uh, grabbed some good D linemen, a kid out of Grundy Center who played in the state championship game, Patrick Brown. A um, couple linebackers, uh, Caden Van Berkham from Central Line is going to be a, a really good player for us. So, And then we got some good depth in the back end too. Yeah. Now, uh, I have to bring this up. Some folks know the story. Some folks don't. Justin Silverstein originally touted as a D1 baseball recruit, came in as a walk-on to Iowa Central, switched over to football. Uh, I remember watching him in practices as the scout quarterback. Uh, got some time from injuries from last season, proved himself. Talk about what he means to the program. Yeah, and, you know, coming into it, um, you know, he's a kid who transferred here, went to Western Kentucky, uh, you know, during the COVID time. So, uh, struggled a little bit academically at that time there. Um, came into our program, uh, had to redshirt because of the ineligibility academically when he first got to our program. Uh, so he was gave us a great look on scout team that first year and then really just kind of developed. And he was a buy-in kid from the minute he got here. Um, gave everything he had to the program. Uh, extremely smart kid that can make a ton of plays. We knew he was going to be special. Uh, last summer, we weren't able to bring him back in the summer. Uh, he had some stuff going on at home that he had to take care of. 
Uh, so he really missed a lot of fall camp in, in our summer program last year. So he was a little bit behind. And then last year, I think, went out against Morningside and went eight for eight with three touchdowns. And that's kind of how he found himself in the mix last year. And now uh, he's kind of been our go-to guy going into spring ball and then uh, obviously this fall camp, um, which we have another really deep quarterback room. He's just – he's right now that good. Um, yeah. So he's been our guy. Wonderful. Uh, and week one already happened for NJCAA football on the road to Kansas. Now, this is year two of joining the Jayhawk play-in coach, uh, and they already got a little bit of a taste of the Tritons, yeah. uh, a, a big swallow, if you will. Uh, now you started up on the road with another Jayhawk school, Independence, who, I mean, they are known for not just their football program, but also starring in a hit Netflix series. Does that come with extra determination in practice of focus on the main thing, winning and football, rather than all the distractions? Yeah, we don't get too caught up in that. You know, our guys uh, and our group this year is phenomenal. We got a bunch of kids that are, are uh, you know, really low maintenance. You know, those kids just want to go out and play football. And and uh, really, that's all they care about at the end of the day is, is uh, doing things the right. You know, they're great human beings. They're great men on top of being great football players. And uh, we were able to go down to Independence and uh, play a really tough opponent who, you know, is going to be tough year in, year out um, and handle business the way that we needed to. As you did with them last year as well. 28-15 was a final score this year. Uh, Justin got the start. What was the strong suit that stuck out right away for the Tritons? Yeah, you know, we played great defense all day. Um, you know, we gave up a uh, field goal early on, and that was off of a turnover. Um, defense did a great job in sudden change situation, forcing a kick, uh, gave up three points there. Uh, another score that they wound up later on in the game after we were up 21 to three, uh, we fumbled. They returned it to the house, uh, made it 21 to nine. We blocked the extra point. So, um, and then they scored a, a touchdown late. So our defense was really good all day long. Uh, something that we emphasized all throughout fall camp was chasing the football and running to the football and having 11 hats around the ball at all times. Uh, we were able to do that. You know, I think uh, we get our first score, go up seven to three, and. Uh, in, uh, next kickoff, we wind up forcing a fumble. Got a bunch of guys on the ball. We're right there. Um, they're having an opportunity to go in after that on a run. We have a guy, great pursuit, forces another fumble with Colvin Miller. Um, we recover it and, and uh, go down and score and make it 21-3. Now, as you previously mentioned, no returning wide receivers in that wide receiver room, Coach. But there were four passing touchdowns in week number one. Uh, first off, how, what, what? Yeah, we're uh, – I feel like we got an opportunity to be really good in that room, you know, um, and maybe as special as any room that we've ever had. And, you know, we've had NFL guys, Division One guys, everything else. Um, but this group is a really talented group that's humble, um, that works extremely hard. Harold Trainer is maybe as explosive as any kid I've ever had um, at the wide receiver position. He really didn't even get going. Um, and he's been as solid as we've had all through spring ball and fall camp. He had a drop on the first possession that probably would have been a 60-yard touchdown because nobody would have caught him. Uh, Mario Sanders played really well, had two touchdowns, six catches for like 95 yards. Um, he's explosive. He can play in the slot and outside. Uh, just a tough kid, um, really humble kid. He's another kid who starred in a, in a Netflix show. Uh, oh, really? Um, about Minneapolis North and then the police officers up there coaching the team and, you know, just high character kid. Um, Bartolotta is a kid who uh, came here to our camp and just asked if he can play ball and um, after going to your Illinois State and not playing football. Uh, so walked on here, and, and he's a kid that we think can be as good as Cal Weideman and kind of replace him in that role. So um, we've got a really good group. And then Tyler Shankleberg got a uh, Sergeant Bluff, and then uh, Jaquez Hall out of um, Iowa City Liberty. So And then we've got a, a couple other guys that we haven't had yet uh, with Tavis Malloy, who's a 6'6 receiver that can go get it. Uh, probably – faster than what Desna was last year in, in a bigger catch radius. I don't know if he's got the same competitiveness because I don't know if anybody has the same competitiveness <laughs> as Desna. But yeah. uh, overall, like I say, it's a really good group that I think we can be special with. That sounds awesome. That gave me goosebumps when you mentioned uh, Cal Weideman yeah. and the walk-on, man. That's awesome. Uh, well, this week, first, it's your uh, home opener this yeah. upcoming Saturday, taking on Garden City. They're historically known as one of the top programs in the NJCAA. Talk about not just football, but all the events sounding the, uh, surrounding the first football game of the year for the Tritons. For sure. You know, we've got Garden City, they're number five in the country. Um, you know, I'm joking around today, it's almost like we're playing the Monstars and Justice League in back-to-back -back weeks <laughs> coming up here. But um, they're about as talented as any football team I've seen in the junior college level in a long time. I think they have probably close to 40 bounce backs, um, if not power five bounce backs. They've got a ton of talent running around. 
Um, you know, so we're excited. You know, we're going to see how we handle that test and uh, see if we can be the more disciplined team that, that executes and uh, makes plays when we get the opportunities. But it should be a great environment. Um, you've got cheer back out there, dance band, everything, that home opener. Last year we had a great crowd last year for Indy. Um, should have great weather. So we're something that we're excited about just to be playing at home. Um, you know, we've got some facilities going on on campus that our guys are starting to get excited about with hopefully our turf practice field coming in in the next couple of weeks. So um, it's just an exciting time right now for our program and, and athletics in general. Uh, they went through their week one as well, of course, 27-12 over number 12 Butler. Uh, they showed a weakness that you expect early on, but I'm excited to see how it work, works this upcoming Saturday. 127 yards they've gave up yeah. on penalties. Yeah, they, uh, and, and that was kind of how we got on, on them early last year. I think we had jumped up 30 nothing on them last year, and um, a lot of it had to do with you know them being a little bit undisciplined in some areas. So I know that's something that their coaches are going to have a heavy point emphasis. It's something that they're going to address uh, pretty heavily this week going into the game is, is making sure that they don't have the, the same mistakes and beat themselves. So Awesome. I'm looking forward to it. Uh, live stream on Trite Nation's YouTube channel. Make sure you check that out. Uh, before I let you go, I want to play a little game, which okay. I haven't really gotten a chance to play with you in the three or four years I've gotten to interview you now. Uh, and what we're going to do is go through an emoji speed run. I'm going to show you a handful of emojis, and I just want you to tell me the first player, coach, and or Triton staff member that comes up when you first notice them. You can take it any way you want. Uh, some I think you may take different than others, but uh, the test will be right now. So if you would, sure. first one right here. Brain. Uh, I would say Bartolotta. He's kind of our guy that, that is the smartest guy on offense, makes everything go. Juggler. Uh, you know, man, juggler. Uh, let me see here. That'd be uh, probably Coach Blomberg. He's juggling a bunch of different things all the time and always got something going. So, Turtle. Coach Clegg. <laughs> Coach Clegg all day. <laughs> Slow moving person. Not a fast mover with anything that he does. I'd have to go with Coach Clegg there. <laughs> That's hilarious. The Pirate. The Mike Leach, if you will. The Mike Leach. That'd probably be Coach Conley. You yeah. know, Coach Conley, um, you know, got his black shirt defense and got those guys running around. Old man or Coach, maybe grandpa? Coach man all day. <laughs> Old man on staff, Coach man. <laughs> awesome. Now, this one you can take any way you want. Lucky, lottery machine, automatic. Okay. Um... I'd probably say lucky would be Dan Knutson. He finds a way to be around the ball all the time and just seems like the ball's always in his hands on defense, making a bunch of plays. And that's not necessarily a diss either. It's no. good to be lucky. No, he, he makes a lot of plays. Joker. Joker. That'd be uh, Peyton. He's kind of that, that <laughs> joker in, okay. our, in our deck and, um, you know, guy that kind of also holds everything together too. We're running low here, just a few more. Joystick. Bailey Donovan, Coach Donovan, right there. <laughs> That's so, Coach Donovan, really? Oh yeah. He's he's uh, not necessarily from a football standpoint, making people miss with the joystick, but that cat's on the video games all day. He's out there <laughs> protecting the country, playing Call of Duty. So I love that. See, that's that's where this becomes fun because I would have expected like a Spencer Zinn or yeah. someone like that. Uh, Lumberjack. Yeah, that would be a uh, uh, Carter Gorder for us. Okay, you know, big old lineman, kind of tough. Um, that's what I kind of think of when I think of that lumberjack guy. And finally, the Trident, the Triton. Yeah, right now that'd have to be Justin Silverstein for us. Guy that's kind of embodied our program and, and been with us for three years. Um, that kind of represents everything that we're trying to do here. Well, awesome. That's an A plus running through the emoji round. Uh, and that's going to put a coach on the tailgate show. Coach, thanks for joining us. I hey, appreciate today. you guys. And make sure you tune in next week. Head volleyball coach Sarah Horn going to be joining us for the Marks Automart tailgate show right here coming up on the Trite Nation YouTube channel. CNOS is proud to be your orthopedic and sports medicine providers. You can visit our clinic knowing you will receive the best orthopedic care in the area. Located at Unity Point, we offer quality care to address any bone or joint problems. We are committed to providing the best possible care to the communities we serve. CNOS, proud sponsors of the Iowa Central Tritons. Go, Go Tritons! Tritons! We're CJ Bio, 
In 2012, we opened the only biomanufacturing plant in North America right here in Fort Dodge. Now employing over 200 people in the local area, we've had amazing success in lysing production as an environmentally friendly animal feed. And just as important as our business has been the warm welcome of the Fort Dodge community. We here at CJ Bio want to thank the people in the city of Fort Dodge for giving us the best of all things, a wonderful home. CJ Bio, amazing people, amazing community. Back to the action, Triton Nation. Hank Ambrose with you. The score's 12-7, still three and a half minutes in this halftime report. Uh, let's run through the scores again. Aju Aju got the opening score for Garden City. It was just a simple 15-yard out route. Had him in the back corner of the end zone uh, where he was in free. Alexander Lyons got the second one, a five-yard receiving touchdown coming off of an in route. Um, both times, Garden City went for the two-point conversion. Both of those times went unsuccessful. For the Iowa Central Tritons, Mario is the sole man who had the touchdown. He came off, which came off of a 15-yard fade route. They've ran that play a few times today, where uh, they've just tried to go with a quick fade, throw, pop. Um, that time it worked. I, virtually all the other times hasn't. It's been a frustrating day, to say the least, for the Iowa Central Tritons on offense. There's been some highlights, um, more on defense for sure. I think that first quarter showed a very, very impressive defensive stand that the Tritons held for a long time. It wasn't until the most recent touchdown score where I think Garden City had mustered together the only true complete offensive drive today. Otherwise, not, neither of these teams have had a good, solid offensive drive. Not even one that it has ended in a punt or a turnover, let's say. It's been scratchy all day long on offense for both teams. I don't think either of the teams went into halftime happy at all, uh, and definitely not the coaches on either side. I'm sure uh, you know they got a bit chewed, if you know what I'm saying. Uh, I'm excited to see the fire in the belly to start up, though, for Iowa Central because it better be brewing to kick off. Iowa Central Tritons will be getting on the field on defense. Garden City will be returning the kickoff in this second half. Still a minute and a half for this halftime report. If you're thinking about coming out to the game, I definitely advise you to because it's a beautiful day for football. It is quite windy out. Uh, and, you know, the sun is coming down hot, so wear your sunscreen. Don't wear any dark colors. Wear blue. That's my biggest tip. If you're going to wear anything, wear blue. Uh, Iowa Central Triton fan zone has got a good attendance today. And we got a wonderful band playing, cheerleaders, dancers. It's a great day to be a Triton and a great one for the 23-24 home opener. And also, I'd like to thank our sponsors of the broadcast that will be with us all season long, Avela Bank, CNOS, Mark's Auto Mart, and Rash Construction. Thank you for sponsoring the broadcast here on Triton Nation. 
I am also intrigued on if any of the game plan will change on offense. I think, you know, I always open up plays, calling out the formation and where the receivers are lined up as well, if there's any other backers in. And virtually all day long, Tritons have played from the pistol, which is a very common uh, formation that they've used in prior years. Uh, but I would have expected to see more of a 50-50 look between that and shotgun. I mean, the main difference really is having a tailback stand behind you rather than at your hip. But it, 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 when you spread an amount like that and you go 50-50 like that, it opens up the playbook so much more and it keeps the defense having Kongolo. to be on their toes. Kamba kicking off for Kongolo. Winning Kamba going to be kicking off for the Iowa Central Tritons. What a story this young man has had. A two-year kicker for Iowa Central. Uh, he has been Terrence all Davis. over. He is from Africa. Came to the States when he was just young in third grade. He's lived in New York. He's lived in California. He spent his latter half of his high school years playing football in Iowa. They got a good kickoff there. It's going to be a touchback. Here goes Garden City. They'll start up on their own 20 yard line with a first and 10. Also, will they switch up the quarterback at all? Jalen Daniels is, I, I can't say he's been solid line. today, but considering the Broncos circumstances of what he's been down. through, he's been playable, he's been manageable. They do go out there with them. Other quarterbacks include is the number 12, Cody Kirk, who um, has also been punting today. Cody, highly touted out of high school. Will he step up and play? He was injured in week one. We will see. Here we go with an inside zone, bouncing off tackle. He's still running. He's still going. The fences are open. And on the opening play of the second half, a touchdown score for Garden City. One play, 80 yard rush to the house. Garden City with a big score. Now, I don't, what's that, Matt? It may have been Jones. Let me double check on that on his jersey number. It was Jones, it was James Jones. And they love the speedsters. If you're with us for the pregame show, I shared with you how they've had very many speedsters from Garden City go off and play in the NFL, including likes of Corey Dillon, Tyreek Hill, Mike Hughes, Lonnie Johnson. Going for two here. Open man on an out route. That's finds his way to the end zone. Two-point conversion is good. That makes the score 27, just 12 seconds into the third quarter, and we already have a score. 80-yard rush for James Jones. Wow, and you, you talk about the struggles of the first half, and then I, I bring up the chewing I'm sure they got at not anticipating the plays and not being locked in. And now you start like this, Iowa Central, not a good way to start for their home opener. 27, 14 minutes and 48 seconds remain. In the third quarter, Mario Sanders and Harold Trainer will be back deep to return for Iowa Central. Twenty-seven. Keeping it right here. The wind has started to pick up as well. Wind is blowing into the north, which will go be going with Iowa Central. You see the ball got knocked over from the wind there. Well, here we go. Oh no, knocked over again. With how windy it is, it's been. I guess I would have thought maybe we'd see some more of this from earlier, but no, we haven't. Twenty-seven. As we await for the kickoff, they will have a holder for them. 
Here it is, the lefty. The sky kick is up and caught by the five at the Triton 40 yard line. That was uh, Steven Sewan that made the catch. Really good job at not only making the catch, but calling calling for the fair catch. Uh, that backs Garden City defenders from rushing in. Could have caused a disruption there. So here is the first offensive drive of the second half for Iowa Central. It's first and 10. First and 10, Iowa Central. They start on their own 41 yard line. They keep with Justin Silverstein. Silverstein. Spencer Zinn is in the backfield. At twins to the right. Blocking back is in formation. And they hand off Zinn. Like Mr. Rex, the defensive line, cuts it back in after looking to go out. A gain of four, second and six on the 45 yard line. Corey Hammett with the stop. Hands it off again. And again, Zinn fighting on his feet. There you go. Giving some grit out there. He's going to be short to the line to gain, but a gain of one. That was a really hard fought one yard. Third and three. Third and three. Iowa Central looks to be switching up the formation. Motion and men over to the strong side of the plane. Got trips. Shotgun look. And they call the play dead. Man. What's the call here? False start on the offense. Oh, and that's against Mario Sanders. That's the second time he's been called for a false start today. It'll be a third and eight now on the 43 yard line. Here come some more subs on and off the field. Trips right, lone receiver left in the pistol. Going with a hard count. They went on three, back to pass. Moving forward. Keeper, here's Justin Silverstein. He's got burners. He's got room in front of him. And has enough for a Triton. First down, gain of 20 yards. There you go, Iowa Central. That's one stir of the pot. Now keep it going. 13 minutes remain in the third quarter. Silverstein hands off to Zinn. Zinn is clobbered up. Wow, look at all that yellow. I know it was all on all sides of him. It just set up camp right around him. Loss of two, second and 12. 12 minutes and 45 seconds remain. Doubles on each side in the pistol. Back to pass from the play action, out route. And do they call it a catch? Or did it touch? They do spot them down. This is complete. There you go, a gain of, a gain of 10, no first That's down. With the reception. That makes it third and two. Gain of 10 brings up third and two. Third and two. 12 minutes to go in the third quarter. It's 27. Silverstein hands off the draw. And he's going to be short. Might give him a yard. It was on the handoff that time. I'm looking for it. It's the number seven, which is Gabriel Hilliard. Hilliard. Gabriel Hilliard. Tritons Garrett. go heavy. Look at this. Kansas City Chiefs have used this in a whole lot of formations before with Don Terry Poe back when he was a seasoned veteran. And they go with the direct snap to Spencer Zen, and he's going to be stopped for a two-yard loss. Turnover on downs. That's the fifth time there's been a turnover on downs today for Iowa Central. 11 minutes and 27 seconds to go in this third quarter. 
And this is Big Brother versus Little Brother. Garden City's getting their revenge from last year where Iowa Central beat them north of 40 to 13, I believe is what I have. And Garden City came on a mission showing why they should be ranked at number five. 11-27 remains in the third quarter. It's 27. And here is Jalen Daniels taken back over from the gun. Back to pass. Looks right, has four options, and it's dropped right in the mittens of the tight end. Now what was Daniels pass and what was the miscue Brent there? Peters. I mean, got him right in the hands. He just didn't really make a reaction. It's like he got stalled up for a second. Brenton Peters was there. Second and 10, 11, 24 remains. The clock stopped. They go gun. Trips left. <clears throat> Trips left. Hand off inside zone. Moving forward. There's Jones. Inside hand off to Fred Davis. Uh, gain of seven. Peters with It'll the be a third and three. Going to be a third and five, uh, actually. Third and five. No forward progress. I was thinking he had him there, but no. I will say that the line judges and officials, have, they've done a great job today, been very strict on the forward progress. Inside zone once more, switching hands, moving forward. Going to be a gain of 15. And another Brock Buster first down. Brought down by Stephen Sewan. Stefan Sewan was there on the last tackle. Buster first down. The Detroit 44. First and 10. 10 minutes and 20 seconds remain. Ball's on the 44 yard line on the Triton side. It's Garden City ball. Trips right. Lone receiver left. Also got a running back option. Over the middle of the field. Picked off. Here we go. Here we go. It's Aaron Warren traveling another 15 yards after the interception. Aaron Warren with the pick. Just what the doctor ordered. Triton set up and let loose. Come on. Garden City's giving it to you. With roses in a wooden basket. It's time to eat. Come on. That's got to fire up the Iowa Central Tritons. Going to take over. On the 46 yard line on their side, let's go. 10 minutes remain. Coach is looking for role models, role players. Who's gonna step up? First and 10 from the 46. Going on three. Snap is off. Pass is high. Looking, looking, looking. Just off for Harold Trader. And they want penalties with no, no penalties. And that's the right call there. I think the first look of the, that reason there is they don't believe the ball was catchable for one. For two, for two, the D-back had his eyes looking at the ball. Wasn't pursuing only the receiver himself, but the ball the whole time, it was clean, fair coverage. Second and 10 from the 46. Is it an inside zone? And Zinn gets carry. punched right down there again. Oh, that actually, no, it was not Zinn. It was Hilliard on the last carry. Third and 10 from the 46. Iowa Central has gotten no gain two plays in a row from this drive. Third and 10 for the Tritons. Here we go, here we go. Back to pass. Looking outside for Bartolotta. He makes the catch. It's going to get him to the 50 yard line. Should be fourth and five. Somewhere in that range. Yeah, they're calling it a fourth and six officially. Fourth and six for the Tritons. Fourth and six for the Tritons. 
And the offense is staying on the field. Eight minutes and 45 seconds remain. Calling for Garden City to watch the ball. Man in motion, off the swing. Rolling right, looking downfield, firing. A magic toss over the head. Over the head of the number six. Uh, there is a penalty marker on the play. It was in range to where Bartolotta was running his route on the X. So I missed it. I was primarily watching the intended receiver. Bartolotta was not. Personal foul. Personal foul, ma face mask. Personal foul, face mask against Garden City. So right there, that was a fourth down conversion. And a personal foul is going to bail the Tritons out. First and 10, get back to it, 35-yard line. And they're missing a man on the field. Here we go, Iowa Central. Back to pass, fires one hand to grab. There's Mario Sanders. Pass complete. Wonderful. Sanders, great throw, down. great grab, and perfect timing between the two. Iowa Central needed a score. They didn't just want one, they needed a score. Get something going over there. Mix it. 2013, and here comes the PAT. Line up for it. Congolos Bund and Kamba's kick is good. Kick is 2013. The Make that 2014. We're going to go ahead and throw it to a 30 second break. We'll be right back to see the Tritons kick off right after this on Triton Nation. We're CJ Bio. In 2012, we opened the only biomanufacturing plant in North America right here in Fort Dodge. Now employing over 200 people in the local area, we've had amazing success in lysing production as an environmentally friendly animal feed. And just as important as our business has been the warm welcome of the Fort Dodge community. We here at CJ Bio want to thank the people in the city of Fort Dodge for giving us the best of all things, a wonderful home. CJ Bio, amazing people, amazing community. Triton fans, we're back to the action on Triton Nation's YouTube channel. I am Hank Ambrose. The Tritons just scored 25-yard receiving touchdown. Silverstein to Mario Sanders, a one-handed grab. Had him streaking into the end zone. 2014, 8 minutes, 22 seconds. Here's a return from back deep in the end zone. Crossed the 15 and stopped just in front of the 15. And a penalty marker is on the field. Special team stop. Stop it. Say one. Sports gambling is legal in Iowa. Anyone want to take the over-under on 500 penalties on Garden City today? Oh, my goodness. These guys. Oh, that's why. I, I see why Garden City wears the yellow now to represent the penalty flag. This is just getting ridiculous. 2014 Tritons are down by six. Bronk Busters are going to be set up with a first and ten from their own eight yard line. It's the ground game that's started to hurt the Tritons from a defensive standpoint. Got to plug up those holes. From the gun, doubles left, lone man right. They hand off, off tackle, moving. And a nice gang tackle there brings down the tailback, James. Make it a second and five. On the 14 yard line. Brought down by 
Eli West. Eli West, I hear, was the first to touch him on the last tackle. 7.45 remains, and the clock is ticking in the third quarter. It's a one-possession game in Fort Dodge, Iowa for the 23-24 home opener. In the gun. Handoff outside. Trying to make it a lane for himself. Didn't work. Eli West was there again. There go the Tritons. Rallying their troops and put them down at the line of scrimmage. Third and six. Big play here. Garden City with an empty backfield. Doubles on each side. Garden City's back to pass. Stepping up, avoid the pressure. Almost got to him. Deep, look for the ball. No, man. That tears at the heart. Gotta look at the ball coming in. Got to look at the ball. Aaron Warren's hanging his head. He gave up another defensive pass interference. Pass interference. Defense. Yeah. Not penalty. Automatic first down. And that flag will be thrown every single time. You have a one-on-one -on -one ball, especially lopped up in the air for that, for either of those one-on-one -on -one men. And if you're not looking at the ball and make contact with that receiver, that flag is thrown. Automatic first down and a gain of 15 to the 29-yard uh, line on the Bronx Buster side. Empty backfield. Trios right, duos left. Back to pass. Going to wrap them up. Line of scrimmage. They tried another one of those wide receiver screens that haven't worked out very well today for the yellow. Demas with the reception, West with the stop. Lost some two on the play, brings up second and 12. Second and 12, six minutes and 15 seconds remain. From the gun, trips left, lone receiver right. Checking on the receivers, back to pass, open men. Tritons are showing zone, fires it from pressure. Goes up, one-on-one -on -one ball, and he makes the grab. Pass is caught by Demas. And caught by Demas, a long first down, big grab. It looks like Demas is on the ground. He got rattled there. Let's keep it right here. Got an injured receiver. It's Demas who made the catch. Uh, it's going to be a. It's going to be a 27-yard gain. Demas is injured. We're going to keep it right here to continue to make sure he's okay. These guys are going to get some water. Uh, while I got you, let's thank those sponsors again. Big thank you to Avela Bank, C N O S, Marks Auto Mark, Mart as well as Rash Construction. Thank you for sponsoring the broadcast and for all you do for our local area. Right now, once again, it's Demas who's down for, our, for Brock, for the Bronk Busters. They are helping him up. Star player for the yellow. He is walking off uh, off his two, own two feet. Looks like he's gonna be okay. I'll keep you updated if I see anything to add from the sideline. Here comes a first and ten. Once again. Ball is on the 43 yard line on the Triton side. Forty-three yard line. The Bronc Busters return to action. Tritons with a 3-4 look. Scratch that, 3-5 look. This is a Cyclone defensive formation. Matt Campbell loves running this from over in Ames. There's a big sack. Fumble! Fumble! And the Tritons recover! 
Big fumble, Colvin Miller. Took the lights right out of Jaden Daniels. And the Tritons take over on the 50 yard line. Fumble recovery for the Tritons. Rowing that boat, let's go Tritons. Back to the field, the offense goes. Justin Silverstein. Reigning at quarterback. Gabriel Hilliard standing behind him in the pistol. Trips right. Lone Wolf left. Over right, looking left. Open man, and it's short for Hilliard. Incomplete pass. Now you've been given a wonderful opportunity, an opportunity to go down. March, take some time off the clock and get a score. Once again, Tyrone Gates, if you're looking for your wallet, it is up here in the press box. Tritons now come out in a power pistol. Here we go, running, running, running. On his feet, Hilliard has a 20 yard gain. Hilliard is what the Tritons needed to get some rushing attack going. This will hopefully open up the passing game. And that is another reason that the Tritons have been so hurt on offense. Yes, the passing game was not there in the first half, but neither was the rushing game. When you get the rushing attack taken away from you, it's a lot harder to open up the passing game. Under five to go, the clock is ticking. In the third quarter, Silverstein hands off and spins right into an edge rusher for the Bronx Busters. Who that Bronx Buster was? That was Dakota Doyle Robinson of St. Louis, Missouri. Second and 15, four and a half minutes remain. In quarter number three, Tritons just had a gain for 20 following that. A loss of five at second and 15 right now. Look at those trips lined up to the left. The motion, Mario Sanders, lone receiver right. Oh, and who jumped? Garden City's acting like it's Iowa Central who jumped, and yeah, they're moving back. False start against the Tritons. And a loss of five. Second and 20. Four minutes, 10 seconds remain. <clears throat> Empty backfield. Silverstein stands alone. Trips left. Sanders to his right. Back to pass. Steps up. And he will be sacked. Not a mighty sack. Still able to climb the pocket and not lose anything close to six yards. More of a loss of two. Third and 22, ball on the 42 yard line. Big play here, it's a third and 22. Pistol, back to pass, got crossers. Here's a wheel route, missed again. Swing pass to Hilliard. That Hill. wheel route has been the arch nemesis to the Triton offense. Brings up fourth and long. It has done nothing today for him. And it's unfortunate because it's such a foundational play that is involved in these, uh, in, in the route tree that Iowa Central possesses. and. The fact it hasn't worked today is a big bummer. Fourth and 22, it stops the clock with three minutes and eight seconds to go in the third quarter. Colvin Miller's in punt formation. Here we go. I'm sorry. Kick is up. Punt, back, back, back. End zone, traveling towards the five. Gets it back to about the seven yard line. Under three minutes to play. It was a, that was a nice return. I'll give him credit for that. That was the number five that time. Tajay Russell. 
was in on the tackle that time for Iowa Central. Uh, the return man was Cameron Laborn. First and 10 at their own seven. It's 2014, Bronkbusters still lead. They've had the lead since the beginning of the second quarter. In the gun, doubles left, X receivers right. And they go inside. A gain of three at least. Jones on the carry. And Jones was on the carry that time. And they'll give him four total. A second and six now. Ball's on the 11. Need a four brings up second and six. Second and six balls on the 11. Gun, tight end is lined up as a six man. The fire to a wide receiver screen. There's Cameron LeBorn again. He'll be tackled that time by the number 30 for the Tritons. That is Samuel Hauser that made the tackle. A rotational linebacker, I think. His first of the day, that's what I have. And we have a third down conversion here. Third and five. From the 13. In the gun. Back to hand it off. Oh, ball free, ball free. Possible fumble on the play. They're trying to say that they're calling it dead. It will be called down by contact. Called down by contact is the official fourth ruling. And four. Fourth and four, pardon me. Here comes a fourth and four now. And a three and out for Garden City. What a strange day for how Kirk back to five, powerful these offenses Kirk. are. I'm telling you, once we get to mid-season play and this wind and weather cools out, these guys are going to be top-notch. A lot has been holding both of these teams' offenses back. And a short punt gets to the 30-yard line. Might have got a hand on it. 31-yard line. A Triton coming in might have got a piece of it coming in which would have been Caleb Moore if he did get a fingertip on it. First and 10 on the Bronc Buster 32 yard line. 40 seconds remain in the third quarter. First and 10 Iowa Central. Right back into the pistol. Back to pass. And, uh, Sanders tried running with it before catching it. A dropped catch. It'll be second and 10. Second and 10. Second and 10. 37 seconds remain in the third quarter. Yeah, yeah. I mean, not, not much to report on there. I see a yellow came striking in. Oh, a penalty marker. And it's towards where the tackle was. Fans of concession stand will be closing in five minutes. All hot food items for one dollar. Personal foul, foul face mask. Defense number 50. Against the defense, the number 50. Attic first down. Triton's chanting, you can't do that. No, you can't. That'll bring up a first and 10, which would have been a third and 13. First and 10 at the 12 yard line. Oh, make that 17. 
Back to pass, a quick fire, Mario Sanders scores! All these straight touchdowns have been straight to Mario Sanders. Just a quick flip to him. Oh, and a penalty marker, late penalty marker is on the play. I think, did I see a Garden City Bronc Buster spike the ball? That's maybe what I saw. That'll at least tie it up. Touchdown will stand. Penalty may be enforced on the kickoff. My conduct, Iowa Central number one. Oh, it's against Iowa Central. Unsportsmanlike conduct that will be enforced on the kickoff. Yep, so unsportsmanlike conduct is against Mario Sanders who scored the touchdown. All three touchdowns went to Mario Sanders. That last one was what looked to me more like a slant route, just a short little two-yard forward and then a three-yard dash. Oh, blocked, and we're going to have a tie game at 20 apiece. <laughs> Tritons continue not to have the lead. I'll tell you what, I'll, I'll break down more of the touchdown in just a little bit. For now, we're going to throw it to a break, a 30-second break. We'll be right back with more Triton football right after this. CNOS is proud to be your orthopedic and sports medicine providers. You can visit our clinic knowing you will receive the best orthopedic care in the area. Located at Unity Point, we offer quality care to address any bone or joint problems. We are committed to providing the best possible care to the communities we serve. CNOS, proud sponsors of the Iowa Central Tritons. Go, Go Tritons! Tritons! Triton Nation, we're back to the broadcast. 20 seconds remain in the third quarter. Triton just scored off of short slant route to Mario Sanders. Uh, he did get called for a unsportsmanlike conduct. That backed up the Triton's kickoff. Still good kick from Congolo. Here is a return, making his way to near the 45. Near the 45. First and ten for these Bronc Busters. Brought down by. And remember, Bronc Busters, they opened up the second half. First play from the line of scrimmage with an 80-yard rushing touchdown. Since then, the Tritons have gone 13 points unanswered. It's 20-20. Bronc Busters in the gun. Trips left. Uh, open man right. Hand off. Gang tackle. 64 of Iowa Central was there first, I do believe. It was Kelton Reed who got the tackle. It was. Not made by Mayo. The end of the third quarter. You and that'll be the Iowa end City of 20. the third quarter. Guard City 20. Iowa Central 20, Garden City 20. These guys are going to take a water break. Let's take one with them. This will be a minute-long break. We'll return with more Triton football right after this. CJ Bio. 
In 2012, we opened the only biomanufacturing plant in North America right here in Fort Dodge. Now employing over 200 people in the local area, we've had amazing success in lysing production as an environmentally friendly animal feed. And just as important as our business has been the warm welcome of the Fort Dodge community. We here at CJ Bio want to thank the people in the city of Fort Dodge for giving us the best of all things, a wonderful home. CJ Bio, amazing people, amazing community. 15 yard carry. Oh no, let's take that back. That's Trent Davis on the carry. Eli West with the stop for the track. And that's Trent Davis, second rush of the game. That one good for 15 plus. 35 yard line. Oh, we got a Triton down. We got a Triton down. It's the number one. That's Eli West. Eli West has been an awesome tackler today. Great piece to this defense. You see him as a hybrid safety cornerback role. He gets up to his own power, looks like he's okay. Limping a little bit, maybe just a strain. Hope that all is well for him. Well, we just got started in the fourth quarter, the final to play today. The time is 2.25. Score and it has quarter, been Iowa a 24, Utah State wild State. day for football. Final, it has Utah been. College, uh, wow. Quarter, okay, so just heard an update from Brownie, our PA man here at Iowa Central. 72 to 7, Hutchinson beats Ellsworth. 72 to 7. Hutchinson is who the Tritons will be taking on at home next week. Wow. 2020, 14 minutes and 40 seconds remain. It's first and 10. Daniels back to pass, looking long. Look at these four verticals to the end zone. And just, just away from the intended receiver. That's the number one. That's Demas, who uh, it's good to see he's returned to the action, but it looks like he's gonna be going back out as he's back to limping on the sideline. He's got cramps, that's what he's calling out. Second and 10, ball on the 35. That was Jamel Spidey on coverage for the Tritons. Halfback draw, here we go, Davis moves forward. Miller is in on the tackle. And it's gonna be a th third and inches. Third and half a yard. Third and inches. 14 minutes remain. <laughs> 14 minutes remain. 2020. <clears throat> In the gun. Tight end is attached to the hip of the left tackle. Handoff. Inside rush will be enough for a first down. He got it. Such a big hole that time. That was awesome work by the offensive line of the Bronc Busters. Twenty twenty, thirteen minutes, twenty seconds to go. Clock ticking. It's a first and ten at the twenty-five yard line. In the gun, here we go. The fire right. It's hauled in. Uh, not much for a run after the catch. Angels pass complete. A gain of two, and a Triton helmet came off, so the 99 will Stop sit out for a play. Fight. The 99 is Ethan Bailey of Gower, Missouri. Two on the play, up second, and eight. second and eight. 12 25 remains in the fourth quarter. Trips left. Inside zone again. And he's going to be gang tackled by three linebackers on the Triton side. And, uh, James Jones' helmet comes off, so 
he's going to have to sit out for this third down conversion. That's a star back that they're going to be without. Third and six. Third and six. And hang on now, Coach Conley calls for timeout. Coach Conley calls for timeout. It's the first of the half. Let's just keep it right here. Talk about what we've seen today. Um, lots of penalties from Garden City. I've counted six personal fouls, uh, two from the same player. We'll have them sit the rest of the game. Uh, Iowa Central has one personal foul gone against them. That is against Mario Sanders, the X receiver. Lots of penalties. Um, one thing that I am surprised about, and this isn't necessarily a bad thing, uh, but I've never seen a team like Garden City commit so many penalties but not get, uh, you know, talked back to for it really at all. It's almost like they've just kind of made it part of their way of playing the game, which is a weird way of looking at it. But when you take into account Penalties are happening all the time over and over again from their side. And nothing from the sideline indicating, you know, just been very passive. When we will return, third and six, ball is on the 22 yard line for Garden City. In the gun, stack doubles to the right, lone man left. Uh, false start. Ball start against the offense. It's gonna move him back five. And this is a really big spot because Coach Conley called his timeout. Tritons have two remaining for the rest of this game. But you burn a timeout, you know, on a challenge, or not on a challenge, but you burn a timeout on a defensive adjustment, then you want to make sure you get the stop. And what I like even more about it is with how horrible the wind has been today, more than likely they won't be able to sink a field goal from right here. All muff snap, ball's picked up. Well, it, for a moment I thought it was about to be picked up, but it took an, another wicked bounce and went away from the Iowa Central Triton. Uh, waiting on whose ball it is. And it's fourth down. It is fourth down for Garden City. So that timeout will have worked, I do believe. It'll be a fourth and long, fourth and 17 on the 32. Yeah, and you know, you, you can't kick the field goal, no sense in punting it. These guys are gonna go for it. What's going on now? Uh, play clock and game clock uh, malfunction. Here we go. Time's ticking. 11 and a half minutes remain. Garden City's in the gun. Doubles. Back to pass. Low snap. Evades the pressure. Fires to the end zone. It's away. No penalty. Davis is incomplete. And a turnover on downs. Kudos to Coach Conley. Up the pass. Defense hold and a great hold from the Triton defense. We'll have the offense take over at the 32 yard line. It's 2020, your PAT was blocked from earlier. You've scored 13 points unanswered. Put it away, Iowa Central. In the pistol, doubles right. Mario Sanders is alone to his left. Inside handoff, Hilliard. Uh, gonna have a gain of three. A gain of three for Hilliard. Second and, seven. Second and seven at the 35 yard line. 
11 minutes remain. In the pistol, handoff, moving forward. Gonna be another gain of two. A third and five. Yeah, we got third and five territory. Ball beyond the 38 yard line. 10 minutes and 30 seconds to play. Third and four. Tritons with a hard count. Don't get them, they're gonna have to do an audible and check the sideline. Colin Hooks, it looks like. Back to pass. Going left. It is Hooks. Inside, still on his feet. Bartolana with an Iowa Central first down. And we do got an injury time. Iowa Central's 12 is down. Jaquez Hall. Out of Iowa City, Iowa, he looks like cramps. Getting them sorted out over there. Some water. It is important to remember this Labor Day weekend. Stay hydrated. It's going to be really hot outside today, and even with the wind, that's not doing a whole lot for you. The wind is it's pretty warm too. Stay hydrated. Well, Iowa Central. Hoping to put together a leading drive. It's tied up at 20 apiece. Nine minutes and 49 seconds remain. The There's Jaquez Hall being helped off the field. It appears he is okay. Tritons. Have a first and 10 on the Bronk Buster 48 yard line. Oh wow, look at this stack. Look at this to the trips. Look at that. One, two, three, stacked right on top of each other. Passing play, faking the wide receiver screen. Looking long, fires. Is a catch made? No. Dropped. So receives pass incomplete. It'll be second and 10. Sounded like it was, it was Javante Williams as the uh, intended, intended receiver. Pistol. Trios to the right. Now they've got him spread out. Sanders is alone to his left. No deep safety. Oh, swing pass. Here we go. Washington on his feet. He's moving. He's going. Put up a stiff arm and moved forward for a gain of 20. Oh, we got flags, and it's over by the Triton sideline. Might be a penalty marker on the play. We're waiting for it. I haven't heard a call yet. It should be a first and 10 no matter what it is. Personal foul, unnecessary roughness. So that's going to gain another 15 yards for the Tritons. It's against Garden City. It's personal foul number seven for them as a team. After the penalty, Tritons first and 10. First and 10 for Iowa Central. At the Bronco, uh, Boston, Boston Bronc, 15. Pistol. Looking back, out route, dropped out of the hands of Barlotta. Pass incomplete. Barlotta, the intended receiver. Incomplete pass, it'll stay with 10 yards to go, a second and 10. Eight minutes, 57 seconds on the clock in the fourth quarter. We're tied at 20. Washington is in. 
as the tailback. Man in motion, Mario Sanders. Fake the jet sweep, misdirection for him. He goes to the end zone, wide open. Bah, a lot of scores, and the Tritons have the lead. And we do have a flag in the backfield. Hang on, hang on. Penalty marker in the backfield. Oh, holding on the offense. That's against the offense. No touchdown on the play. Got to bring it back. That's against the 73, Jackson Herinja. Well, eight minutes and 53 seconds remain. That's going to bring them back an extra 10 yards, second and 20 on the 25-yard line. On the 25-yard line, second and 20. Trips left, no man right. Jet sweep, inside zone, running with it. Oh, had one man to beat. Silverstein ended up slipping. If he stayed upright, he might have been in there. It would have it would have had to take a real speed demon to track him down. If he stayed on his feet. Eight minutes, 15 seconds remaining. That's again a six. It's third and 14. Third and 14, pistol. Twins on each side. Man in motion, back to pass, looking. Here's a fire. Middle of the field, going towards the end zone. Mario Sanders just short of the end zone, but picks up the first down. And a one up for Mario Sanders. Wow. I've heard only the best about him, and he's showing a lot, a lot of athleticism today. It'll be a first and goal. Oh, injury timeout. Injury timeout for a defensive player. That's for Garden City. Looks like it's in the end zone, and that is out of my line of sight. Out of my line of sight. The sun is made its way directly over the field now, beaten down hot. Final score from Kinnick, Iowa 24, Utah State 14. Sounds like the Iowa Hawkeyes won today, 24-14 over Utah State. That was just being reported in. And the injured player, it is the number 12 is up to his feet and he is walking. I'll get you that name. Number 12, that's Jamal Hood, Baltimore, Maryland. First and goal, ball on the one yard line. Here we go. Spencer Zinn has returned to the game. Tail back and flags are thrown right away. And up to seven, there's a penalty marker on the play. Flags are thrown. Illegal substitution on the defense. <laughs> Illegal substitution on the defense. Half the distance to the goal remains first down. So it's a first and goal. Well, we're inches away, but a first and goal. Job's not over with. Punch it in. Seven minutes are on the clock. Outside handoff, and brought yep, down for three brought down goal. for a three-yard loss. Second and goal on the three-yard line. <clears throat> you 
got six minutes and 35 seconds remaining in this fourth quarter. We're tied at 20. In the pistol, back to pass, looking right, rolling right for the end zone, looking, nope, still on his feet, breaking ankles, Silverstein touches in, Justin Silverstein for six, no, oh, going to be a personal foul. Going to be a personal foul. I believe it's unsportsmanlike. <laughs> yep. Silverstein hit the gritty, and uh, that's a penalty. Right as I saw the gritty come out, I knew it was over. Oh no, not the gritty. Well, here's a PAT try, 26-20. Buenin Kamba sets the kick. Puts it down and it's up. And it's good, 27-20. Tritons take their lead back. As they have now got on to score 20 unanswered. Let's go ahead and throw it to a minute long break and be right back for the kickoff return for Garden City, coming up on Trite Nation. Kick is up. Back to the 15. Garden City return to the 25. The 30. Duke move. 33. Still going. And stall. And we got another penalty marker on the play. Another one thrown late. I, I, I missed what this one could be. Devon Chapman made the special teams play. Personal foul, blindside block against uh, their turn team, number 41. So uh, if you're keeping tally of personal, or if you're not keeping tally of personal fouls, I got them for you. Tritons have committed two as a team. Garden City has committed eight. Uh, th these guys both together have to be over 300 for penalty yards given up. We still got six minutes to play. 27-20. From the gun, here's handoff. Outside, running. James Jones is smacked after the gain of four. Trent Davis on the carry. I'll make that Trent Davis. Again, I get those two mixed up. Uh, and Davis' helmet comes off again. Second and six 
Five minutes and 40 seconds remain. Second and seven. To the gun. Trips left. A lone man right. Back to pass. Looking. Fire. Picked off. Picked off by the four. There's Jamal. Jamal Spy. Yes. Tritons. Well, I guess they're, they haven't ruled it yet, but wasn't that definitely in the hands of Spy? We're waiting for it, waiting for it. Catch. Oh, simultaneous catch. Ah, there, the stripes are getting that <laughs> from Triton Nation now. Ball's down the 40 yard line, first and 10 for Garden City. Well, simultaneous catch always goes to the offensive player. So a first and 10 for Garden City. From the gun, trips left. And they'll hand off, bounce it outside. Running room, still going. He'll make his way out of bounds. And that was James Jones. That was definitely James Jones that time. Four and a half minutes remain. Got a second and six. Second and six on the 44 yard line. Back to pass, looking. Oh, not looking for long. Fumble, fumble. Fumble, Corbin Miller picks it up and the Tritons take over. It's milking time. Get out the ales. 27-20, Triton's up by one touchdown and they take over in Garden City territory on the 33 yard line. And you know what, that interception would have been about right there too. So <laughs> I think this was destined to happen a turnover at some point right on that 33 yard line. Twenty-seven, twenty. First and 10 for the Tritons. Silverstein, play action. Lobs it up. Oh, push. That's a penalty. A penalty I said it earlier. If you don't look at the ball, and if you make contact with the receiver, when he's the intended receiver, that penalty, be, that penalty will be thrown all day long. It'll be a first and 10. They're either going to give him 15 or spot a foul. I don't know how far out that was. Might have went over 15. Pass interference against the defense. Oh, and that is exactly 15 yards. First and 10, ball's at the 18 now. Pistol, look. Look how bunched in the Tritons are. No one is spread out wide. All that open room over there. To the near side of the camera, the bottom of your screen, you see that? See if Tritons pick up on that. And they hand off. Washington inside is stuck inside. It would just be a second and 10. Under four minutes to play. Garden City has all three of their timeouts. Tritons have two. Austin Williams with the stop for the Bronx Busters. Austin Williams got the stop on the last play. Second and 10, three minutes, 30 seconds remain. And here we go, in the pistol. Clock is running. A handoff, Spencer's in outside, there's that open room. 
And he'll have a gain of just a few. Spencer's in on carry. A gain of just a few. Marked out the 15 yard line. Third and, third and seven coming up. Take oh. their first charge time out of the half. And Garden City takes their first charge time out of the half. Let's take it with them. Tritons are approaching another score. Let's see if they can punch it in right after this. Correction, there's no time. CNOS is proud to be your orthopedic and sports medicine providers. You can visit our clinic knowing you will receive the best orthopedic care in the area. Located at Unity Point, we offer quality care to address any bone or joint problems. We are committed to providing the best possible care to the communities we serve. CNOS, proud sponsors of the Iowa Central Tritons. Go, Go Tritons! Tritons! I do see Garden City warming up backup quarterback Kirk. He was to be coming in. Tritons are milking down the clock. They're going to just have it run, wind all the way down to the very last second. <clears throat> Excuse me. And that's going to get them at about the 2 minute and 25 second mark. Oh, no, they hike it with five seconds to go. Fire into the end zone. Man falls down. Yep, penalty markers are thrown, and Trainer is not happy. He wanted a touchdown. He's going to have to settle for a defensive pass interference to go in his favor, but, yeah, you could tell he wanted a touchdown there. Yep, pass interference, automatic first down. The ball will be placed on the two-yard line, so make that a first and goal. Tritons marching their way in for a score. 27-20. We go in the gun. Man in motion. It's Trainer. Oh, he falls down, gets back up. Trainer, they want him to score. Oh, he gets knocked. <laughs> and he gets, <laughs> gets knocked over by. <laughs> got knocked over by Bartolotta. <laughs> I don't mean to laugh, but Bartolotta <laughs> knocked him over. And knowing how bad Trainer wanted to score, that's got to make him even more upset. <laughs> it's been a rough day for Harold Trainer today. <laughs> And there's a timeout in Garden City. It'll be a second and goal. Ball on the seven yard line. Timeout was just taken. We're keeping it right here. There goes that Triton band again. I think when this game is all said and done, this is a game where you put it in your back pocket and whoever may come out with a victory goes, I'll take it, because a lot of negatives could be said from both sides. And like I said, both these teams are very talented, but you're not going to make your way through a lot of the games if you you know play like you did today with all those penalties. And that rough first half really hurt them too. Twenty seven twenty in the pistol. Second and goal pass two men pressure block there on the second effort to the end zone and dropped. And that was that was dropped by Harold Trainer. Oh, poor Harold. This is tr Harold. Oh, no. Again, I, I feel for him. This is three times now. Six points were right in his glove, and each one has just been muffed. Q 
Should be a third and goal, and it is on the eight yard line. In the pistol, Zinn is the back. Here comes Barlotta in motion. Back to pass, play action, fire, running, made a man miss. Crosses the five, made it to about the two. Pass complete, Michael Barlotta. Oh, and an injured, and an injured Bronk Buster. They're going to check them out over on the sideline. While I got you here, I'd like to thank our sponsors of the broadcast. They'll be with us all season long. Avela Bank, CNOS, Marks Auto Mark, Rash Construction. Thank you for sponsoring the broadcast and for all you do for our local area. And if you're from around the local area, make sure you go into one of these local stores and say thank you. Thank you for sponsoring the broadcast this year so that a lot of family members and friends, coaching staff from all over the country can tune in to the football game or whatever we may be covering, whether it's football or volleyball for this time of year. One minute, 56 seconds remain. Still with an injury on the field. They're going to get him up to his feet. I still have yet to see the, there he is, number 10. Number 10 is B.J. Blake. If you recall, B.J. had a really solid sack earlier. They set him with a cornerback blitz. Picked it up. It's been phenomenal for him today. Maybe their de best defensive player today. He'll head back to the sideline. So, uh, fourth in goal, and Congolo Buenincamba will go ahead and try for a 20 yard field goal. 27 20. This could surely put a seal on the game today. The kick is down, it's up. And it's good. Congo, Ben and Kemba. Adds another three to the Triton total. 30-20. One minute, 51 seconds remain. Great stuff, Congo. Uh, so it appears Garden City will be rolling with their backup quarterback for this coming drive. You stick around to see how that fares coming up next in one minute on Triton Nation. We're CJ Bio. In 2012, we opened the only bio manufacturing plant in North America right here in Fort Dodge. Now employing over 200 people in the local area, we've had amazing success in lysing production as an environmentally friendly animal feed. And just as important as our business has been the warm welcome of the Fort Dodge community. We here at CJ Bio want to thank the people in the city of Fort Dodge for giving us the best of all things, a wonderful home. CJ Bio, amazing people, amazing community. CNOS is proud to be your orthopedic and sports medicine providers. You can visit our clinic knowing you will receive the best orthopedic care in the area. Located at Unity Point, we offer quality care to address any bone or joint problems. We are committed to providing the best possible care to the communities we serve. CNOS, proud sponsors of the Iowa Central Tritons. Go, Go Tritons! Tritons! 30 to 20. Tritons lead it. Here's a kickoff. Bringing down the Bronx Buster at about the 35-yard line. And here comes backup quarterback to lead his team, Cody Kirk of Nibley, Utah. He should be coming out on the field. I'm looking for him now. Now I don't see him. Oh, you know what? Look, they're keeping in. They are keeping in the eight. Jalen Daniels does stay in. Now Kirk is over by their offensive coordinator. Helmet on. Assume he's, I, I would think he's coming in soon. He had warmed up. It looked like he was ready to go meeting with the team. But no, they keep it. Daniels goes deep on the first play. A long ball. Pass incomplete. It's going to be incomplete. It was intended for Demas. 
Second and 10, ball on the 37-yard line. Here's Cody Kirk coming out onto the field now, the backup quarterback, yeah. Jalen Daniels, it looked like he just sent up one last prayer. Give it a go. Here we are, back to pass. Looking right, stepping up, firing left. Oh, wow. Hit of the day by the number seven. Branson Peters had a sack earlier. That was awesome. That was as good as it gets for tackles in open field. Third and four. One twelve remains. An out route to the tight end. Hurry up offense, they get it. They get the first down. First and 10, minute and eight seconds remain. Kirk's moving the offense. Back to pass, looking right. Pump fake, he'll fire the second go around. Picked off, picked off, picked off by the number two. Again, it's Aaron Warren picking up another interception. Way to go, Aaron. No fly zone from the deep six. There you go, Iowa Central. The previous play is under officials review. And they call for the previous play being under official review, but I don't know. I got a front row seat to that last interception, and that was good to me. Not only did he get one foot down, but two, and probably could have made for a third one, a fourth one even. He was good. This will stand. So 30-20, 58 seconds remain. Iowa Central Tritons are taking on Hutchinson this next Saturday. Come out and support the Iowa Central Tritons for that contest. Should be a noon kickoff. And wear Triton blue. Hutchinson also wears blue. They should be wearing their white uniforms, I would think, unless the Tritons make an audible and pull their white uniforms out. Um, but make sure you wear your Triton blue nonetheless. So we're still under official review, looking it over. No matter what the call is, 58 seconds will remain in this game. The Tritons have scored 23 points unanswered. Bronc Busters have been held to a goose egg in the second half. Still under review. And they're going over and checking it out. All the angles they can, looks like a decision has been made. Looks like a decision has been made. Let's wait for the call. Yeah, and it stands as called. Yeah, that was, I think that was an easy call for me. That, yeah, easy. Right there, interception. 30, 20, 58 seconds remain, and the Tritons come out in victory formation. They start the woofing. What a day. To close for football fans in Fort Dodge, Iowa. This has been quite the broadcast. Um, almost Reminder speechless. I don't even know where to begin be for the game the wrap up. Uh, but I will say the penalties getting through this game, it, it, it's unbelievable. We are at 310 is the official time right now. Uh, I'm happy the Tritons have pulled away with the victory. I can say that. However, there are definitely things to improve on heading into this upcoming week against Hutchinson, especially after they posted a 73-7 win over Ellsworth Community College. Uh, the Triton neighbors. That'll be the final snap. Make sure you're there. Wear your Triton final blue at noon, three. and that is the final Third snap of the game. Put down by Silver Justin Ball. Silverstein. 30-20 final score. Mario Williams, uh, Mar Mario Sanders. Ends with three receiving touchdowns on the day. He is your Triton player of the game. 
Justin Silverstein played great as well. Overall, hard fought effort in the second half. Shaky at first in the second half. Uh, first half definitely want to throw away, put in your back pocket, and be ready to go for this upcoming Saturday. Football fans all across the states, you enjoy your Labor Day weekend. And go Tritons. Till next time, I'm Hank Ambrose on Triton Nation.